What is this? Hey, it's Jason from Bohemia Bees. It's about late December here on the eastern shore of Maryland. And uh, I got this cool little tool. If you can uh, comment below before uh, you get to the uh, one minute mark when we tell you what it is, we might send you one for free. But we're going to tell you about what this tool is. But first, let's talk a little bit about bees in the wintertime. So it's late December. We just passed the uh, winter solstice, which was on the 21st of December. Um, and for many that don't uh, study bees, uh, the 21st of December is a pretty good milestone uh, as a reference for uh, keeping bees in colder climates, really. Uh, if you move your bees around the country or if you're in warmer climates, it's not as, as important. Um, it probably plays some type of a role, but in the colder climates here on the eastern shore of Maryland and north, um, it does play a role. Uh, and what does it mean for a, a beekeeper? It's really the start of winter, uh, the winter season. We've had several weeks of cold weather and wet weather, you know, that fall, late fall weather. But now we're hitting the, the point in time when your bees are going into a, a, a period of when there's either a lot of uh, moisture, excess moisture, uh, there's cold, and uh, they need to have a lot of stores still in there. So be sure to make sure that you are checking on warm days only when the you know temperature does get above 50 to 55 degrees. Maybe the bees are flying a little bit. You know, crack that lid a little bit, slide in another uh, fondant patty. Uh, we're using Hive Alive uh, fondant patties this year on a lot of our colonies just to test them out because they uh, make a pretty good product and we really want to see how they do. Um, so that's one of the things that we're subs subsidizing the food stores they already have. So nothing can be more important than just honey um, stored in their hive uh, from nectar source. But if you have to substitute it, we naturally have fed late in the fall uh, with a, a two to one and also we're using the Hive Alive fondant patty. So that's in another video. We're not gonna talk about that today. We're gonna to talk about this thing and what it is. Um, but again, continuing to keep monitoring our bees through the winter, that winter solstice point is very important because it's the 21st of, uh, of December and it's the shortest day of the year. Uh, what does it mean by the, uh, to bees and beekeeping? Well, the next day, the 22nd, is now one day, the light is a little bit longer, right? It stays a little bit longer. Now, not as much, uh, enough to keep a, a queen to continue to lay a ton, but she will now switch gears. If she has declined in her uh, volume of laying of eggs, she's probably done it all the way up to the winter solstice. And by doing it up to the winter solstice, because there is less hours in a day, less sunlight, and bees, as you know, need sunlight to orient in their hive and just the overall light uh, that warms in the sun warms up the hive. Um, so that's important. So that milestone of the uh, of the uh, 21st and the winter solstice is important to beekeepers, uh, at least here on the northern, uh, northern climates or, or colder climates. Um, you can see we've got a couple hives back here that are, are being overwintered. Uh, we're going to talk about what this thing is, wait to the end of the video, uh, and we're going to show you how we use it. But I just wanted to get on here and try to make, continue to make videos. We'll probably do some videos inside the shop working on some projects this winter. We'll talk a little bit more. Uh, we might even do a a video from the Hive Alive conference. So coming up in January, um, a few beekeepers here in my area are going to go up to go down to actually to uh, Sevierville, Tennessee, and um, Cayman Reynolds and his uh, his beekeeping uh, uh, outfit puts together a uh, conference. This is the second year for the conference, I believe, uh, and it's grown. It's sold out by this point. So we're going to visit that. Uh, I might put a link in the description below if you want to find out information about it or try to get tickets next year. Um, but, you know, Cayman Reynolds is a, is a beekeeper in Tennessee, and he, you know, built out uh, a pretty substantial apiary, uh, and we follow him on YouTube. It's another person on YouTube that we follow uh, and, and learn and, and, you know, try to get information about bees and get from different sources. Uh, there should be a lot of other individuals there. I think Randy um, from uh, Dirt Rooster, or Dirt Rooster is going to be down there, and a few others. So I won't get into that right now. I think Ian Stepler even, I think, is coming down from Canada. So it's going to be a great conference. I'm really looking forward to it here in January. Um, but uh, let's continue to look at what we're doing here on the Eastern Shore of Maryland because beekeeping is local, right? So what Ian does in the north and what Cayman does in the south does not mean what we do exactly here in the northeast. So make sure that you are following and trying to get information and input from several beekeepers, not just one particular beekeeper or one particular book. Um, beekeeping is local to your region and what you need to do. 
So you're probably all wondering, what the heck is this, right? What is this tool? Well, you can see it looks sort of like a scraper, right? And it has a hook on the end. This is a uh, tool that was created by um, B Smart Designs. We use a lot of B Smart products here on the uh, Eastern Shore, Maryland, and Bohemia Apiary. You can get these on our website if you want to get one of these. But if you haven't guessed by now, this is not just a scraper, it's a multi tool. And in the wintertime, it's an amazing multi tool, especially if you use um, the B Smart product bottom boards. Even if you don't, it's a great tool because what ends up happening is that cluster of bees that sits uh, in the, uh, on the hive in the box that you see below here down here, these boxes have clusters of bees in them right here. And those clusters of bees, um, have to shiver to keep the temperature consistent on the brood's nest. So the brood's nest needs to be maintained at 93 degrees. And if that brood's nest drops below that, well, then the bees could freeze to death, uh, or the brood could freeze and it could not replenish the bees that need to be replenished that are dying off. So bees will last a pretty long time through the winter. They last a lot longer than the 45 days they traditionally last in, a, uh, in the spring and summer. Um, they're winter bees. They have a little more fat bodies on them and they tend to last a little bit longer because they're not really going out foraging. They're not really, um, you know, the hairs on their body and, the, and their wings are not getting damaged. So they live a little bit longer, uh, help them get through longer winter months. Um, but they still need to maintain the temperature in the colony, 93 degrees. So they shiver in a ball, like we've had, uh, we've talked about in previous videos, to try to keep that constant temperature. And that's what they are doing in all these hives behind me. But as they shiver, the, the bees that are emerging out after 21 days or in that brood cycle that are coming out, they're in the center of those and they're taking care of the brood that's, that's being still reared by the queen. There's eggs and a very small amount. Again, all the way up to the 21st, the queen will lay uh, and so, or she'll slow down all the way to the 21st and then she'll start to pick up as we move into spring uh, away from the 21st and more towards the summer solstice. Um, so this tool you see here, um, if bees are in that cluster and they're getting aged and they go to the outside of the cluster, they're going to naturally die off and they're going to drop to the bottom board. If it's a warm day or a series of warm days, the bees are pretty good about cleaning out their dead. They call them uh, uh, the, uh, the mortuary bees, right? So they're going to do a good job at trying to, to clean out the dead bees so that they don't have any uh, blockage on the, uh, you know, blockage on the, the, the bottom board or the entrance of the bottom board. Um, so, but what do you do if you want to try to make sure they don't cl clog that bottom board up? You can use this tool. So if you waited to the end of the video, you're now seven minutes in. I appreciate your support. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down here in the corner. You slam that subscribe button. Make sure you follow us if you want more information about bees, beekeeping, or Eastern Shore beekeeping, um, or if you want to get a hold of us and get equipment. If you're local to me, uh, happy to help you out, help you help you out get bees in the spring here if you need them. Um, but here on the Eastern Shore of Maryland, we like to share information and we love our subscribers. We love our support. So make sure you hit the subscribe button down here, right here. Just tap that real quick and then we'll tell you exactly what this hook is for. So the hook is for, if you see, you have a hive and you're coming down and you want to be able to clean out those dead bees, right? So you're going to take this and you can now be able to slide that underneath and pop up if you use the, um, the Bee Smart bottom board reducers. These are the, the winter guards that are left on. That I put on it and then you can take this hook and you can push it back to the back of that hive like just like that all the way to the back and you can fish out any dead bees and there's not many in this particular hive that means the bees must be doing a really good job but if you don't do that and you don't pull out those bees sometimes they can get jam-packed in front of the entrance and then the bees will get trapped inside if they don't have an upper entrance to get out so in this particular colony they have a small upper entrance. They've done a really good job. It's a very strong colony um, to be able to get the bees out and on the ground in front of it, uh, really out of the hive, uh, so that they can uh, not block that entrance as they go into uh, the rest of winter. We're going to place our entrance reducer on here. Make sure it's tight down so no mouse, so no mice can get in there. It's, it's the mouse side down on that. And that's what this hook is for. So if you waited to the end of the video, nine minutes in, there you go. You want to know what this was? It's a multi-tool scraper hook for allowing you to work and uh, clean out your dead bees in the bottom of the bottom board. If you have to use the scraper to pry up the, uh, the actual uh, entrance reducer, uh, it's just really a good, nice little tool to have uh, in, in your, uh, your quiver of tools for beekeepers. There can't be enough tools you all see online. You can buy tons of different tools. This is just a, a nice tool 
uh, that Be Smart Designs have uh, created to give to uh, to sell to beekeepers and have them be able to continue to use different tools in their apiary. So I appreciate you watching again. Uh, I know this was a long video, but I really enjoyed uh, talking with everyone here on uh, YouTube. I appreciate everyone's support. Again, so hit that subscribe button. If you like what you see, even if you don't like what you see, subscribe because you might like another video that we let me make uh, that's, uh, that's a different topic. So I appreciate it. Thanks a lot, everyone. Have a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. We'll be back on here in probably another week or so with another video. So thanks for watching Bohemia Bees on the Eastern Shore of Maryland. Remember, where beekeeping is definitely more than a hobby. It's an obsession. Thanks for watching, everyone.